Hi, this is Edward Mendoza. How do I prepare for a test? Coming up. Chronos Matrix, focus on what matters most. Visually keep your goals in check and create new goals so you can stay on schedule. Watch your daily, weekly, and monthly results to stay focused. Free time optimization app. And welcome back. I have, um, throughout the different courses that I've been taking, come up with some strategies that seem to have helped me quite a bit in some, in, uh, in the classes I'm taking now. Right now I'm taking databases, um, database systems, and they have really tricky like exams. And had I not prepared the way that, that I did, I think I would have been completely flatlined. But um, you would think you just read the book, you know, you would just watch the lectures, you know, prepare with, uh, with the practice exam, uh, practice exam and that would be enough. Uh, not at Georgia Tech. This, <laughs> anyone who just goes and takes the class and studies the material that the, the, that the uh, professor tells them to uh, prepare for and just walks in there and does well, it's, uh, that's undergrad and that's much easier, uh, um, a much uh, easier university. Georgia Tech loves to give you tests where it's like, it doesn't matter how much you prepare for them. It's like by the time you, you, you finish the test, you have no idea if you did well or if you've completely... Um, got destroyed and um, this particular course is, is rather difficult because it's 50% of the grade right and other courses that don't have you know you have a project you'll have a team project you'll have an individual project you'll have exam it's like the grade is kind of distributed rather well database systems it's like it's 50% is the test and they are extremely tricky and um, even though I, I, I prepared for, uh, for, for, for this exam for many days, I finished the, the, the test not really sure if, uh, if I did well or not. But the, uh, the way I prepared for it, I can't imagine ha having prepared it, uh, more than I did. So I felt confident going in. Um, even after the test, it's like, well, let, let, let's see what, what grade um, I got. But I understood the, uh, the course material very well. Um, so what I recommend is first you watch the lectures, right? The lectures uh, uh, of the course that gives you the overall, you know, a, a, an idea of what, um, what's being discussed. Uh, then I recommend reading through the, um, the textbook that they, uh, that they, um, that they recommend. You go over those chapters that are going to be on, uh, on the test. Then I'll give uh, um, whatever practice test that they have um, a shot and I'll see more or less, you know, what I'm getting. The first time I did that in, uh, for, for this exam, exam two, I got like 50% of the grade. So I knew it's like, well, okay, I have to really prepare more for this. So I recommend not looking at the answers because if you look at the answers and you see which ones you got right, it's like you'll probably just memorize that practice test, which is going to be absolutely useless when you get because they're going to give you a completely different test anyway. And trust me, if you think the practice test is hard, whatever it is that you're doing in the practice test, they're going to just you know crank that up to to uh, to about a thousand. It's like it it gives you an idea of what the test is going to be. It's not similar at all. This is not this is not like high school or just regular college where it's you know what what you're doing in the practice test is you know you're pretty solid to actually do the test. Now this just gives you an idea and it's <laughs> for example there, there was um, the, uh, one of the graphs that uh, that was on the practice test it was literally three and a half times more complex than, than what uh, on, on the test and what that, the practice test was. So how would you really prepare for that? Well, you do it this way. So um, you go through the, uh, the practice test, right? And then you just kind of get an idea of what your grade was, right? It's like, I don't look at what the answers were. I just have an idea. Then it's like, I go back and I watch the, the uh, video lectures again. And then I read the the uh, the chapters again. Now these are very dry reads, right? Because it's like they'll get whatever concept you can understand practically, and you understand, uh, you, you know, what, what the uh, what the what the um, 
what the application uh, um, actually is, right? So for example, like in databases, it's like I've built many systems before. It's like I understand how to combine and, and connect um, uh, databases, but they're gonna, first they're gonna give you lots of words that they're just words to replace other words. So they're not gonna use columns and rows because everybody understands that, right? So they're gonna use uh, attributes and uh, tuples because it's not even the same way that, you know, everybody understands in, in you know, a tuple in programming for the most part is, uh, is uh, const, uh, um, an array of constants, right? So it's like you have an array and you're not changing um, any of the, uh, any of the uh, the data in that uh, in that array while your program is running. Well, in data in uh, database terminology, they'll use the same word tuple, but it slightly means something else. It literally just means row. So why not just use row? Because that would make it more simple. <laughs> so they have to just use different words and so many different. Uh, um, fields will do that. It's like you'll use it in machine learning and AI. The, the, even though it's it's still computer science, it's still you know applying a mathematical concepts, something like that. It's like you'll use tuples in Python, and it's not exactly the same thing in databases. So why not just use the names that everybody knows? I I honestly think it's just to be more confusing. So first is that you just have to memorize what's the words that are going to be on the test because they're not going to use the words that you're you're used to when you're expecting to use. They're going to use their their uh, um, their set of um, of words on the test, right? So you just have to memorize that. So one part is just the memorization. So I literally just go line by line, right? Just here's what the word is. Okay, you know, row is a tuple. Uh, um, attribute is is going to be column. Um, so that's going to be the next pass that you're going to be doing with the uh, when you're reading the uh, the chapters in the book. But as you're going through the, the chapter the next time, since you've already seen what what was on the practice test, you have an idea of kind of what's more important, what you need to study more. Now you're you're writing down your own um, concepts and ideas of what's what's being uh, what's being presented in the book, right? So I kind of do in reverse. So uh, video lecture first. Then I read the book, then I do um, the practice test. Then when I go back, I like to do it in, 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 in the reverse or order. Reading the book, then uh, then doing the video lectures, then trying again the, uh, the, um, the practice test and see what score you get out of that. If you're acing it at that point, you might be kind of ready. And I would say <laughs> just hang out or just you know, take the test if it's already, if it's already time. Um, my second time around, I was around like, you know, 60% or so on the practice test. So I knew I definitely need to, you know, still work on it on this, on the third round. Now, now what I do is on concepts that it's like, I'm not understanding, you know, well, because the, uh, the video lectures, they'll leave certain parts out. You, you know, usually the professors will give like an overview, but, um, they don't go into all concepts. So they'll say words that you're not really sure. Like you think you understand what they mean until you do the quiz and you realize, okay, I, didn't really understand what, what, what he was saying. Um, at that point, it's then I'll look for um, external sources, which is YouTube, Stack Overflow. You know, just looking on, looking at different articles that uh, um, other computer science uh, um, researchers have, uh, have written. Uh, look at different scientific papers. At this point, it's looking at you know extra resources because they're not going to cover everything. And basically the book does cover everything, but most of these textbooks, they're so complicated and so convoluted that by the time you kind of get to the, uh, to the content that, that you're going to need, you're either just exhausted or you're just not understanding the, the terminology either. So this is again, where external sources really help out. So at this point, now you understand what the, uh, what the content of, of um, that's being presented in the lectures are. You have a much better idea of what's the material that's necessary in, in the textbook, right? And um, you're getting, you're kind of connecting those two, uh, those those two dots in the uh, in the external resources. So, but what I used to do before is I would watch lectures. I would just really go off on tangents. I would try and listen to any uh, uh, um, piece of information. 
of, uh, of the material I didn't understand. This is kind of like what I did in statistics and some other courses. And the problem with that is it's, it's going to take you much more time and then it might not be covering what's on the test anyway. So at this point, since the whole process is just passing these classes, like, you know, the courses are going to be difficult enough. You don't want to be adding extra time and, and effort. Um, cause you know, you can do that, you know, after, after you uh, pass the class, if the content's really something that's necessary for your career at that point, then I would take the, uh, the, uh, the practice test again. This time around, I got like a 90 something. So I'm like, okay, that's decent enough. And then I took the test. Um, m most of the content of the test I understood, but they were being a little bit tricky on how they were asking it. That's why it's like, even though you might be very prepared, it's like, you don't know exactly what, what the tests are gonna be. At that point, just do your best and, you know, again, pay attention to the withdrawal uh, period. Um, if you don't think you did that well on uh, on, one of the, uh, on one of the tests and the withdrawal period is coming up, just look at your overall grade, right? That's something I, uh, um, I've also noticed. My attitude is if you're getting close to the withdrawal period and you have like a solid B, I would say kind of stick it out if you, you know, if, if you, if you know what you're doing in the class. So, you know, sometimes it's like, well, we just get really busy in the first, uh, um, couple weeks or, or, or the first month. And then it's like, we know we'll give it more time, but if it's content that you just know, there's just no way you're going to, you know, do better in it's, I would definitely recommend, um, just with, uh, withdrawing as soon as possible. Cause you don't want to affect your GPA. Right. So, uh, hopefully it doesn't come out to that, but, um, it's, <laughs> No matter how prepared you think you are, they're going to set you up in ways where it's like you're just not going to be prepared, right? That, that, that also happened to me in, in, uh, with, with Goodbye um, towards that, that final project where it's like I almost had the entire set done. I was missing just one, uh, um, one out of 15 um, uh, of, of the question sets, uh, not, not the 15, sorry, of... Uh, of, uh, of, of the 12 and I couldn't get the, the overall, uh, the overall grade. I mean, I still passed the class with a B, but it's <laughs> had I just gotten just one more, you know, uh, of that set, I would have gotten uh, a much better grade. So that's an example. It's like I had most of the tools. I just wasn't getting one uh, answer, um, correct. And since they don't show you what the, uh, what, what the inputs are, a, a lot of times you're, you're just guessing. So in other cl classes, I was lucky enough to, you know, right before the deadline, um, get the, um, get the right, uh, uh, um, answer that they were looking for. So I hate to say it because, you know, being Georgia tech and, you know, such a strong computer science background, um, it shouldn't be like that, but sometimes it really is just luck, right? So even though you're preparing for it, you know, the content, you can talk about it for hours. There's uh, some courses. It's, it's like I'll talk to other students. Uh, um, I'll help other other, other students out uh, on Piazza, and then it's like I'll get stuck in one piece and I can't get you know the final grade. Which it's not a big deal so, as long as you pass the class. But so it's just frustrating, right? Especially <laughs> with my with my background, which I'm I'm used to. I mean, you have to understand. I come from a solid a background it's like with my bachelor's degree it's like i didn't get anything um under under an a in the in you know my my entire bachelor's degree so that was the mindset i was coming you know from but again it was th these were our classes uh a couple of uh math a couple of computer science classes but overall most of my classes weren't in you know computer science and the university i went to wasn't as intense as as georgia tech right i mean People think, oh, online, this should be easy. No, this is, this is, you know, MIT level kind of courses. So it's like, you have to really, really be prepared for the classes you're going to be taking, especially cause it's, you know, it's a, it's a graduate level. It's, it's not a, it's not under undergrad. So yeah, these, again, I'll just keep saying it. These classes are not a joke. You have to be very prepared. Um, but for me, these are, these are the, uh, the techniques that I'm using now. So even if you don't do stellar in a class, I think it's like, this will give you so much of a, a, um, a better preparation versus some people just watch the lectures. Eh, you're going to be missing out some pieces. 
other people will just kind of go over you know the books and if you already have a really really good um a, a strong background in that particular um subject that'll be enough but a lot of us were coming at this kind of you know a little bit on, on the dry side as far as the terminology goes to it as far as the theory behind it right so even someone who's been you know creating data, uh, um, databases and uh, um, working on apps working on uh, different pieces of software the theory the really pure theory behind it was like okay well this is uh it's something that you can do at, at a practical level but you might not understand exactly how to mathematically you know um use the uh the proofs that, th that they're talking about so it's a learning curve definitely it's uh and is it useful yeah it's like i'm already you know seeing how to structure databases very very differently and it's definitely helping how i'm thinking about using it, you know, the pandas libraries um, with Python, right? So for machine learning uh, aspects of it, it's also very useful. So in the end, all of these techniques, all these tools are just gonna make you uh, a much better computer scientist, right? So in the end, it's definitely worth it, but it's kind of painful, you know, getting there. So hopefully these tools are, uh, um, will be useful to some of you and um, I gotta keep uh, working on the next one.